The passenger train. My company was opening up a new office out in Oklahoma, and I was having to commute from New York. We were in the business of selling ringer wash machines, icebox, kerosene lanterns, Singer sew machines pedal driven, for people to afford these products that far out west. Times are really beginning to change from the 1860s into the future. As I boarded the train, I decided taking a walk from one into the other this was a new model that would just put on the tracks. And I was curious to see what all it had aborted. So I looped around the train and come up on the other side so I can sneak to the back and get on at the caboose and work my way up to the front. As I made my way through the caboose, you could see the railroad engineer's tools and where they slept at. As I entered into the next car from the caboose was the passenger sleeping quarters car. It was very luxury with the satin drapes covering across the front of the beds with burnt orange mohair fabric around the trim to the wall with brass buttons inserted and the windows were much bigger than the old model and a lot easier to slide open. I just love traveling on a train when I can. Feeling it rock side to side. It puts me into a deep sleep. Then hearing the clicking of the wheels on the rail. And the midnight breeze blowing in from the window. So as I continued on into the next car. Which was the dining car. It looked like a dream come true. With has satin tablecloths on all the tables and real china tableware which had inlaced gold trim running a completely around the edge and true chrome silverware that was spotless set up right next to the plate it would give you the image of please sit down and eat with us and also with crystal glass drinking glasses oh with chairs not booths like the older train cars as I reached down to run my hand on the back of the chair yes that's true cushion backs that look like they were designed for royalty. Not common folk like myself. You know I am a businessman. A nature calling myself a salesman by trade. And then I noticed the windows had his little blind used to pull down. To help knock the sun out as you're eating. I am excited about seeing the next one. As I entered into the car. I could notice all the padded booths. And what wasn't padded had pillows. It was so elegant and this car also had the blinds with a dark green floral design running along the edge. As I peek my head forward into the next car, I notice it was another car just like this one. But as I was scrummaging to get through this car to see the next one, I noticed the next one was set up for playing cards and board games I just know and enjoy my trip. As people started to board I decided I needed to go ahead and find my sit area. Do I want a window seat? Which side of the train do I want to set? Well I've been in these predicaments before. And I found it is normally best to sit on the opposite side of the afternoon sun. If you sit where the afternoon sun's coming down you will get too hot. And sweaty and also to pick if you're going to be on the inside seat or the outside seat next to go window then you can get more air but every once in a while you may get a blast of smoke coming in the window off from the steam engine up front and whoever sit next to the window it's up to them to open or close it but I will take my chances next to the window on the north side of the train in other words I'm sitting on the right far side going west. And I've always noticed from the past. We
that the seats ride smoother halfway down the car than being at either one of the ends. As I went to turn around I scoped out the one I wanted and placing my satchel on the booth next to the window and sliding in I got looking out the window onto the loading dock and observe that it don't look like too many people are riding out west today. Of course $20 for a ticket is not really reasonable for everybody. But as they come aboard and started to sit, claiming their spots for an overnight journey to the western world, a new frontier, or am thankful that we're only half capacity, that maze there's more room to move around. I now see the ticket master coming. The ticket master said, Excuse me sir, may I have your ticket? And I see how far are you riding with us? Oh you going almost the end of the line. We hope you enjoy your trip with us. And we will be serving drinks in a little while back in the dining car. And usually around 10 o'clock the poker players gather up into the front car. So if you like to try your chances, that's where you need to be. And thank you again for riding with Central Passenger Rail. And if you need anything sir, I'm just a snap away. So as I continue to reserve my seat next to the window in the passenger's car, thinking about if I want to play a hand of poker or not, all of a sudden you can feel the car jolt from the train engine begin to move forward. I always love listening to one starting up to move. It seems like the engine is taking in long deep breaths before it's eagerly pushing hot air out just like a bull preparing itself for a matador in the ring for a bullfight. Then you can see the steam rolling down along the outside of the cars headed back to the caboose. And then there's an echo sound that runs down through the cars from where the couplings that attach all the cars together and making one last large clicking sound from where they made connection and taking after 10 or 15 minutes before you're up to high speed traveling at 65 to 80 miles an hour. You can begin to smell the smoke as it bellows out of the front smoke stack of the engine. Did you hear the whistle relieving steam and signaling it's on its way? Get off the tracks it belongs to me. Also to warn people. At the railroad crosses, the train is coming. Get out of the way. To me this is something so enjoyable you would hope it would never end. Riding on a modern day train has to be one of the most rewarding things there is. Well that is besides a steamship. I think I still like to train better. As I eased my way back to the dining car, maybe to get some breakfast or something to drink, I will do the same thing that I did in the passenger car. There again I tried to sit on the north side near the window. As I walked to the door, right away I spotted a seat. After I sat down, I quickly reached over to open up the window, to let a breeze in. Then the waiter showed up at my table, saying what can I get for you sir? I replied I'm drinking wine can make it red or a burgundy and like to order an omelette also. Thank you. After a short time passed, the waiter brought my meal and my glass of wine to me. I'm enjoying my omelette and the potato cake pancakes. I just love them. The last time I had any I was living at home with my mother before she passed away. But I also order one when I see them on the restaurant menu. And if I don't see one listed on the menu. I will describe and tell them how to make a potato cake pancake. And please tell the cook how I want it. This is what I tell them. First you mix up like some pancake mix. Then on the other burner you bowl you some potatoes with or without the peelings. When they just become to be soft. Then take them out of the cook pot. Put them on a plate. Now cut them up into big to medium chunks. In other words large size pieces of potato and pick up the plate and begin adding just a little bit at a time to your pancake mix and then pour them onto your griddle 
let cook until they get toasty brown. And then flip them over and toasty brown that side. Now serve. Either with or without syrup. Well I done fueled myself up and sitting back to enjoy the ride watching the lantern swing back and forth as it was starting to put me asleep. The view outside. From my window. I can see head of buffalo back off in the background. It looks like a couple Indians was chasing the buffalo with bows and arrows. Of course this is nothing unusual for going out west. But it's much nicer seeing it from a train than from a saddle on a horse. As I continue to take another sip of wine from my second glass, I eased my head back around to notice some of the passengers that was aboard. Some of them look like travelers, maybe going out to visit their children, that is starting a home in a new world. And one of the other passenger, Look like a carpet bag salesman no telling what he's got in that bag the seller it could be anything from toothbrushes and combs to mom's seek work miracle cure. What I really like calling them is peddlers. They peddle their stuff and move on to the next town. Riding the rail day in and day out. And down the other side up toward the front there was one or two women. Dressed up in a lot of lace. Beautiful colored dresses. One of them was a purple pastel, with a very large white lace running around the edges of the arms the waist and finding their ways in several layers to the hem. The other lady's dress was a lot brighter, with a bright red, with tan colored lace, running all around her bustle. I like the bustle. To me it always accents their ass. Normally topped off with a big bow tie on it. I finally got the picture. They saloon girls. Probably going out to get them a job. Where they're finding gold and silver now. And the booth in the far back from here looks like a preacher. He's one of the many different religions they have created in order to make a living off of people. I don't need to start talking about religion. I believe we all have our own insights. Everybody else also. I couldn't even speculate a story on them. But at the same time I noticed an older lady sitting at the table just ahead of me. Enjoying her a glass of wine. As I went to move my foot. It felt loose. So I back up my chair. To reach down and tie my shoelaces. Now completing that. I lift back up. And pull myself up under the table. As I eased my head up to look around, I notice the lady at the table ahead of me kind of gave me a head nod and a very friendly smile. Then I heard the door open and close. I looked over there it was the porter asking around if there's anything we need that he could get. I said excuse me porter, can you bring me a deck of playing cards? so I can play a game of solitaire? He replied, Yes sir. I can get you a deck in just a moment. After a couple minutes had passed, the porter showed back up with some cards. I knew this would be a good pastime. I always enjoy playing solitaire. Then the lady sitting at the table ahead of me came back to where I was sitting and said, Do you mind if I sit down with you and enjoy watching you play? I've always wanted to learn and was always busy with my work. Beg my pardon, my name is Patty and I am moving out west to be with my children and help them with my grandchildren. But I used to work up in Chicago at one of the many nightclubs up there but I am far retired from that. Yes ma'am let me introduce myself my name is Robert and I'm headed out there to open up a new store from our New York store division. We have two of them in Chicago and four in the New York area and we have begun to move west and as I was telling her my story 
all of a sudden it started to get dark. I turned my head to look out the window I noticed we begun to enter into a tunnel. And there were no lantern lit in this car. At that point I didn't know what would happen. I have a strange retired barroom queen sitting at my table. She may pick my pockets while it's dark. I know I'll feel better once we get out of this tunnel. You can hear everybody starting to slide their windows closed. Trying to keep out the smoke from getting in the car. And then you can hear the front steam engine whistle going off. I really hate it when they do that in a tunnel. It seems like that sound just echoes through all the cars. And all the way out to the caboose. Then your deaf ear her ears for a few minutes. As we made it out the other side of the tunnel, I quickly checked my pockets to see if I still had my stopwatch, my pocket knife, and my pocket purse. As I patted all my pockets try not to bring attention to her. Will it all checks out? We good to go. I still have everything. Then I felt the train beginning to slow down as to stop. As my curiosity took over, I'll open my window again. Look out and notice. It was slowing down. Apparently to fill up with water again at the train stop. The steam engine consumes a lot of water. The train engineer stops at Evertown. Then I could hear the engineer clanging the bell over and over to let the station porter know he's here and needing water. And of course some people riding will get off and others will get on. But when I looked across at the table again I noticed the lady was still sitting there watching me play cards. And then all of a sudden she said, Are you married young man? Do you have a wife waiting for you out there? I replied, No I don't Patty. I'm going out to start fresh. And for no personal reason I asked her, Do you have someone waiting out there for you? I am so flattered that you asked. But no son I don't. Then the train comes to a complete stop. As you could hear the engine letting off its last little bit of steam. And getting prepared to. Feel up its water storage tanks. Patty looked up at me. Could you please watching my baggage? They're on there under the table. I would like to get off here for a minute and quickly scamper my way over to the bar to get a half pint of whiskey you don't mind watching my baggage do you no ma'am try to get back for the train starts to leave I know it can be a good 20 maybe 40 minutes it always takes at least that long to fill up their water tank I'll be back before then while Miss Patty gets up to go get her whiskey, I begun to think about her. No more than just being curious, like I am about most folk. Wondering who am I riding with? She seemed like a really pleasant lady. Awful polite to be a saloon girl at one time. I see that she is on the heavy side somewhat. And kinda tall also. Look like she might be in her 60s or older. But well dressed. But she does have this strange facial feature. Her nose looks like it's got a ball on the end. Not big. But a ball. And her ears were a little bit bigger than most I have met. But she does appear to have long slender legs. There again it's hard to tell. About someone under a dress like that. Especially if they wear a big thick petticoat. It is no way of knowing how they're built. All I know is when she was sitting in that chair, she filled it up completely. As I was sitting there, trying to hold my position at a good table, and watching some of the passengers aboard the train, and four or five got off, I sit there for a while, maybe about 25 minutes. Then I could hear the whistle blowing. One long one. And two short ones. 
Probably this is let people know. The train fixing to pull out of the station. And I was beginning to wonder if Miss Patty was going to make it back to the train on time. Not that I really concerned about her. But she did leave her luggage in my care. And just about the time that thought entered my mind, she was now boarding and coming into the doorway of the dining car. Walking straight over to my table. Almost like she might have ownership of me. But anyhow she's just a nice lady. She said, Thank you young man. Thank you. For taking care of my luggage. It was so much faster leaving them here. Than me having to drag them over there and back again. You know this day and time. You don't know who you can trust. But we've been riding together for a few hours now. I feel safe with you. Then she looked over at me and said, Do you want to get a little snort of this whiskey? It's more like a mild bourbon. It's got a real smooth taste to it. You can feel it going down, like some whiskeys kind of burn as you swallow. Come on try a taste. I guess I'll give it a shot. Considering how you said it goes down so smooth. A little bit of whiskey probably helped relax me for the trip tonight. So she handed it over to me. I took one of the glasses on the table. Turned it over so I could pour me just a little bit. Maybe an inch or a couple of inches. That should loosen me up for a good night's sleep after. I poured. Then I handed it back to her. I noticed she didn't choose a glass. She turned the bottle straight up. Got her a big swallow. Then pulling it back down and replacing the cork back in the bottle again. Then putting it in the pocket of her carpet bag. Wow, it goes down smooth, don't it? It's begun to loosen me up a little bit. After I finish my glass, I was starting to not feel any pain and start talking. Silly. As I am not used to drinking at all. And I believe Miss Patty has beginning to recognize I may be drunk. Just as soon as my glass is empty. She was reaching down in her pocket. Pulling the bottle back up and corking it. And pour me another inch of whiskey into my glass. Without even asking if I wanted more. Now I'm start to think she was a bar roommate one time or another. But also I begin to think. She is trying to get me drunk. And if so. What is her plan of execution? Does she think I'm loaded with money? Or because I'm well dressed? Or maybe because I have good grammar? From our conversation earlier. I'm going to open up a store. It's all about the money. It's always just about the money. I don't see how it could be about sex. She is possibly old enough to be my grandmother. As I just turned 21 last month. But what do I have to lose I don't have any money. It's all in the bank. Where I'm headed to. I had Wells Fargo to deliver my money last week. So I lifted my glass up and says cheers. She replied. At this point. Can you consider just calling me Patty? What do you say? After the first glass of whiskey, we become to be new friends. I can understand that. That is some smooth bourbon whiskey. I didn't feel it burning when it went down. As we sit there playing double solitaire, of course I had to show her how to get started. And then the porter was making his rounds and beginning to light all the kerosene lamps. As I turned to look out the window, I could see nightfall coming fast. It began to get dark, and I become to be a silly happy drunk. My head was starting to spin, especially after drinking some of Patty's barroom whiskey. I am ready to hit the sack, and no longer than I thought it. I decided to go to bed and sleep it off, I said Miss Patty. I'm sorry I met Patty. 
I think I'm fixing to turn in for the evening. I will probably see you in the morning. I agree with you. I'll about ready to hunger down myself and go to bed. But I do have some trouble sleeping on a train. Would it bother you? If I had to wake you up. For some more of your good conversation. It seems to relax me well. I don't find that in many men. I was thinking to myself. Oh God here we go I think she's making a play on me. But from all that she has drink. She will probably go to bed. And this rail car. Will rock her to sleep. But forgive and respect someone. I said yes. That would be fine if needed. I said. Are you headed back that way also? She replied. Yes. We walked sliding down the wall to keep from falling on our way back down through there to the next car. As we were walking I could see that a lot of the passengers have gone to sleep. Most of the drapes were pulled. And they were in bed sleeping. I hope instead of listening to us talk silly. Well this is my stop. Bed number 15. That's what's on my ticket stub. Good night Patty I'm going to bed. As I laid there. Then decided to open up my window. To get some fresh air. And gaze out look at the stars it was such a clear night and then I noticed the little dipper. I don't know much about astrology but I do know that's what man. Used for telling the time at night. And as a map to get around the country at night. And then. I could hear a coyote howling in the far background. There again I was glad to be here on the train and be out there in the prairie. My head is still spinning. Then I started to dozing off and fall asleep. And dreaming about the new store. And World One would put the shelves up at. And setting some of the new appliances. Out on the brand new porch. For people to marbleize over. And creating new credit with me. I was so excited about starting a life in the new world. Then someone came into the store and was asking about getting credit on an icebox. I began to feel them to tug on my arm. In my dream I didn't remember seeing them reach over to get me by the arm. Then I felt it again as I waked in my better senses and rolled over. I noticed Patty looking at me from underneath my drape, saying, Robert, I'm having trouble sleeping. Can you talk to me? Just for a minute or two. Until I get sleepy. I said sure Patty. What do you want to talk about? And I started to ease my legs off the bed. And she said, No you don't have to get up. Just lay there and talk to me. My head was still dizzy. The way I was feeling I'm all for that. As I rolled back over and looked at her, I could see she changed into her nightgown. And by looking at her eyes, she might had finish off that bottle of whiskey. Then she reached over to me and gently squeezed my shoulder, saying, You sure feel strong. It wouldn't hurt nothing. If I laid up there in the bed for a minute or two, just until I got tired. Then I can ease back over to my bed. You don't mind do you? I thought about it for a minute. And I can still feel the whiskey sloshing around in my stomach a little bit. Then I said. Get aboard Patty. Make sure you get your foot firm on that first step down there. As she eased on up to my bed. I started to notice out of her dress. She had lost 40 pounds. But she still is a big lady. And I hate to think she's old enough to be my grandma. Then as she climbed up. She snuggled over to me and laid her head right on my arm. And in no time. She would start to slowly run her hand back and forth across my chest. And once in a while stopping to play with my nipples. Slightly pinching it and pulling on it. 
I hate to admit but it was starting to feel good. It's been a little while since I've been with a woman. Then she reached her hand up there toward my face and pulled me around so she could line me up for a kiss. But after she started kiss no me, I got a thought in the dark. She could have been a 20 year old woman age may not count in the dark if you're older or younger. Then she took her other hand and started easing it down my leg under my nightgown, feeling for my underwear. And without no stopping or pausing, she knew where she was headed and was committed to grabbing my dick and pulling it out from one side of my underwear. Then I could feel her gracefully turning her body, easing her way down there. And then all of a sudden, I could feel my dick getting wet on its head and her hand on it, starting to pull it and push it back and forth. I could feel my dick begun to get even more wet, but I have to admit, it was getting me aroused. My dick was definitely getting to attention. In other words my flagpole was standing up. Then I could feel her pulling up her nightgown and sliding her leg over my body. It was so dark in there I don't know how she knew what she was doing, where she was doing it at on me. So I just lay there and allow her to take control. And she did. She would reach under there, grab my dick in her hand, and start sliding it around on her crotch. Until all of a sudden, it felt like my dick was put into a warm glass of water as my dick went up in her hole. I had to speculate. She found her hot spot. Now she could start to roll her hips around and around. Then she would stop and pushed her hips up toward my upper body and pushing her hips back toward my knees. Then she would start doing this rapidly and then her titties come out of her nightgown and started popping me in the face back and forth over and over. I'm surprised she didn't knock the car off the track so much was going on and I could feel her juices starting to ooze down and drip off of my balls then down between my butt cheeks of my ass then Patty leaned forward to place her hands on my shoulders I was speculating that it was to help her stay balanced I really do like younger men they know how to keep it up stiff and hard I'm going to fuck you like you've never been fucked before you just lay there I'll give you some good memories of me now beginning to feel you coming in and me go ahead boy shoot them juices up inside there then all of a sudden I could feel myself starting to come in her then I come some more and it was feeling very good nice and warm and soft then she took her fingers and clamped down on my shoulders Maybe she could seal me come inside her. Then I come again. And she squeezed again. This time harder than the last. At this point I forgot about how she was. In my dreams. Or my midnight thoughts she's 20. And I will definitely keep this story to me. Who won the bed with a woman. That's 40 years older than me. But in the same token. I'm glad she talked me into it. Then I could hear the whistle blowing. As I rolled over to look out the window, I noticed it was the next morning. And there was no Patty in bed with me. I don't see how she could roll out the window. As big as she was. Or did I just dream all of it? Either way it goes. It was good. I could feel the train starting to come to a stop. This is where I get off I guess the moral of this story is everybody needs loving but sometimes it's best to do it in the dark. <laughs>